This is the story of the one. As head of maintenance at a concert hall, he knows the show must always go on. That's why he works behind the scenes, ensuring every light is working, the HVAC is humming, and his facility shines. With Granger's supplies and solutions for every challenge he faces, plus 24-7 customer support, his venue never misses a beat. Call quickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. So as we have mentioned on the show before, <laughs> we write a little header of each scene and then we all put our jokes in, uh-huh, right? Uh-huh. And we'll usually write the first sentence of a scene or a a, a piece of writing, <laughs> right? If it's like 44 A little dialogue or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Marsh, who got to the notes first this week, decided to introduce this scene with the heading <laughs> Breathless Recriminations. I need a fucking dictionary <laughs> to get into my notes for this podcast. That is an excellent description of what how this scene God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema, unless we decide to do two of them. I'm your host, No Illusions. Heath's off this week. I wonder why, but sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Mormon movie month, baby. I got a tray of funeral potatoes. My penis is inside someone, and I promise not to move. Let's do this thing. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a bit of a weird mid-month start. It's just that, like, hey, we're going to, we're, we're like, going to be in Salt Lake City. How could it Had not call it? Up there? Yeah, show. right. So... <laughs> And also joining us, of course, is perennial guest masochist, co-host of Skeptics with a K and COVID doer, Michael Marshall. Marsh, welcome back. Oh, hey, guys. Lovely to be here. I know nothing about Mormons, so my penis isn't anywhere and I have no potatoes anywhere near me. I didn't get the memo about needing potatoes, but yep. I, I, I'll see if I can sort that out in the break. I hope your penis is somewhere. <laughs> I hope your penis exists. <laughs> what did we say about phasing your penis out of his existence when you're on the show, Marsh? Every time. So tell us, Marsh. What will we be breaking down today uh, first? Oh, uh, so we watched Nephi and the Brass Plates. It's the first episode in the animated Book of Mormon series about the time that Nephi and his surprisingly diverse family fled <laughs> Jerusalem so quickly that they forgot to pack something that belonged to somebody else. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well... If you love Disney classics like The Prince of Egypt, but your holy book is as well written in comparison to the Bible and you would like the two animated films to match in quality, (sighs) you will love this movie. It's Richard Rich throwing one to the church folks at home, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Well, so yeah. So to be clear, this is a 24 minute video. So we're going to be doing two episodes on this week's show. And we're going to actually get like a separate little intro for the next one later. So speaking simply of the Nephi and the Brass Plates one, is there anything you guys want to nominate that for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, yeah. I want to go best worst disguise. Yeah. Because there is a moment in this children's film where someone needs to pretend to be someone else. So the method that he does that is to kill that person. And then the next time that we see them, it definitely looks like he's wearing the guy's face. Sure does. Mm -hmm. It turns out he's not wearing the guy's face, but it could not look more like he was wearing the guy's face if they'd done that on purpose. It took me so long to realize that it wasn't that. Yeah, and and let's be clear that the reason that it looks like that is because the animation is fucking terrible in this. It's so bad. If we were doing a best worst for both episodes, it's best worst. We don't need that many frames. Yes. This thing is, and mm. it's like they got a buy one, get one free deal on frame. Oh, <laughs> and everybody's face when they turn just changes shape like they're thinking about anamorphing, but change their fucking <laughs> mind. Nobody looks through it. Guy looking is. left, a guy looking right. You can't tell it's the same dude except for the clothes. It's so fucking bad. Oh, God. There's a moment where this camel's walking and the frame rate is so low that it's difficult to tell which direction they're moving in because it's sort of flickering back and forth. Right. It looks like one of those things where there's like, if you see them going forward, you're right-brained. If you see them going backwards, (laughs) you're left-brained. Yeah, it's one of those things. Yeah. (laughs) 
All right, so I was going to go with best worst plan. Now, this is straight out of the Book of Mormon, but but mm. Nephi at one point, like his brother fails at something. He's like, I got a plan, and it's the worst possible imaginable <laughs> plan. We'll get there. Yeah, and I'm going to go with best worst lesson learned. Now, those of you who listen to Scathing Atheist and followed along with us on Mormon Peace Theater back when we were reading the Book of Mormon were uh, as surprised as I was at the, uh, I'm going to say, indefatigability of Nephi's brothers to keep beating him up <laughs> after did. an angel tells them that he is the chosen one of God. Uh, that is reflected in the animated film as well. Yep, yep, sure is. is. All right, well, there's a lot of to pass coming on the other side of this break, so we're going to keep it brief, and when we come back, we'll dive into all the detention flipbook animation that is Nephi and the Brass Plates. Guys, Guys, amazing news. What is it? Yeah, you're more excited than that time you accidentally took a sip of caffeinated cola. Oh, oh, wow. First of all, Steve, that was the worst day of my life, and I'd appreciate you not bringing it up. But secondly, we got approved to make the animated Book of Mormon, guys. We're going to make our very own Disney movie. Wow, Disney's making it. What? No, uh, but, a, but, but, but a guy who worked for Disney... Is making it. So that's uh, pretty much the same thing. Obviously. It's identical. So I guess the only real question is, uh, you know, what, what, which story should we tell? Right. Yeah. Because we want something kid friendly. So not too violent. Mm -hmm. Right. And, yeah. um, you know, there are parts of Mormon history that are, well, they're, they're true. They're just confusing. Yeah. So we should probably not. Yeah go to those right away. Mm. And of course, it is the 80s, so we should probably stay away from anything about black people who we acknowledge have souls about 10 years ago. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Modern times. Yeah, so what we're going to need from the Book of Mormon is a story that isn't racist, sexist, or ahistorical. Exactly, yeah. We'll just so, do... Uh, um, we'll do one of those. Um, You guys just want to go in chronological order instead. Yeah, that's probably best. Sorry, did you say 10 years ago we said that? 10 years so ago. Yes, 10. Ah, I don't think it's, it's not been that long. It's not great. <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open up on Jerusalem circa 600 BCE. Hell yeah. <laughs> The narrator goes, my name is Nephi. I wrote in my notes, he read at gunpoint. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Yeah, they might have gotten Richard Rich for the animation, but they did not get the voice talent. <laughs> uh. I think even the animation, that's phoning it in. Because it's a, throughout this, this is the first time I noticed that the animator really does struggle with where fingernails go. Yep. At some point, it's like about mm. an inch away from the end of the finger. It's, yeah, it's somewhere the in the third, finger reaches. Fine. Yeah, second knuckle or so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. So we, so we open on Lehi, and he sure is worried about Jerusalem's future. He's like, God, what are you going to do to Jerusalem? And uh, he, like a fire tornado hallucination appears to him and burns Jerusalem. He's like, I'm burning my fucking down is what I'm going to do. Yeah, just silently, which is a bit of a weird thing to just like do, silently do the threat. Like this fire whirlwind god is either only communicating in mime or it's the equivalent of like just cocking the, like doing the gun thing with your hand and pointing. <laughs> right, yes. Someone. Or yeah, or the thumb across the thumb across across thing. thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, okay. So yeah, so Lehi goes in to warn all the wicked Jerusalemites and they don't want to hear any of his repent bullshit, right? And to be fair to him, he has a master crowd of 14 people and a horse, which, you know, is... Not that bad. I've given talk to smaller audiences sure. than that. I'd have yeah. been happy with the 14, without the horse, but the 14. Yeah, well, if you had a horse in there, it would have been it for a weird skeptics in the pub. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and I was going to say, with, with a horse there, then you have an audience that's been on the same amount of ivermectin as some of your audiences. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there you go. So, you know, <laughs> right. works out for everybody. I do like, and I don't know why they kept this in, the first heckle after he's like talking is, throw him off, which I thought was pretty funny. Yep. Yes. Throw that out there. Who were they heckling that to? He stood by him. <laughs> himself on a right. large podium. Who are they heckling that to? You throw him off, man. Yeah. Come on. 
So, so somebody's going to fucking do it. Oh, I really wanted the horse to heckle next as well. I really wanted the <laughs> horse. <laughs> <laughs> Take his apple. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, and also, the, this is where we first start the tradition in this film of lazy animators drawing tiny crowds. Oh, yeah. Because right? yeah. it's supposed to be a bunch of people, but like Marsh is being very generous at 14. And then when it, they actually start heckling, we just zoom in on two or three of them once they have to actually do shit. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, when you were a kid and you would draw yourself in front of like a big audience or in a stadium full of admiring fans, maybe that's just me. Yeah, you. <laughs> and you would start drawing the faces in to your big stadium and or theater. And then by the end, you would just draw a bunch of circles yeah, and be like, there's people, you know, people, there's people over here too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait until we get the city in the second one. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. So, okay. So that night, Lehi gets a dream message from God as well. Put a pin in that. We're going to have a whole fucking video about that in a minute. Right. Oh, I really wanted the dream message to also be from like a silent fire tornado and he's having to like interpret what it's doing now. It's like, I, I, I don't <laughs> it's get okay. it. I don't get it. Four words. First, Two first words. Three yeah, syllables. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but so we all we see is him waking up and going, wow, that was an awesome looking dream vision. <laughs> Thanks, God. <laughs> they don't even show us the dream. I was so angry that they didn't show us the dream. Later, I, now that I know, we will see the dream and I'm mm. angry that they did show us the dream. Yeah, right, so like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're in the sweet spot at the moment. Yes, no, no, uh, no pleasing a motherfucker when your source material is the Book of Mormon. Right. Yeah, so, but Lehi wakes, goes and wakes Nephi up. Now, Nephi is dressed in a headband and wrist cuffs and like a Tarzan onesie. He's dressed like an extra in the He-Man cartoon. Yes. yes. Yeah, he's dressed like Kevin Sorbo's Hercules there you the go. entire time. Yeah. Yes. In his sleep. In his sleep, yeah. He yeah. wakes up with his wrist cuffs and his headband <laughs> on. Which would be less weird if everyone else in the movie wasn't dressed entirely differently. Right. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, but dad tells Nephi, hey, we all have to leave town tonight or the townspeople will kill me. I just heard from God's fire NATO, right? So then we cut to Nephi's evil brothers desperately loading the camel and complaining about how they have to do all of this work. And I, I wasn't totally clear who was part of the family here because these are a very diverse looking bunch of people. There's not a lot of right. commonality amongst them. They don't look like either the father or the mother. So all I can assume is that like essentially Lehi sold his sold his oats pretty broadly back in the day. And this is kind of the, the, the <laughs> after uh, that. But we don't know that yet. So we, I just got Guy being a wine little shit. I didn't know it was his brother. Yeah. So but that's what you have to understand, Marsh. Who is that? What does he have to understand, Noah? Is that those two brothers are the source of all of the darker skinned races in the world. And Nehi is, and Nephi rather, and his other brother are the source of the light skinned races. Does the animator understand that? Because in the crowd we saw before, there were several people You're of right. much darker skin than those guys. <laughs> You're <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> So, okay, so then we, we cut to the the mom and the little sister. Enjoy the little sister for this scene. We will never... See, no, sorry, she's in the next scene. And then she disappears from the from the universe. Yes, because this is where they're, like, leaving in the middle of the night, like the Von Trapp family. Because I really yes. wanted them to, like, push the camel to the edge of the town, but they get stopped <laughs> by the baddies when they try to stop the camel's engine. Right, right. Yeah, so, but as they're leaving, mom looks at her ostentatious, jewel-encrusted golden cup and thinks... Ah, it's the simple things I'll miss once we're gone. <laughs> she, she gives a goodbye hug to her jeweled cup. And I wrote in my notes, oh, she really is Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> also, this is where I noticed for the first time that the closed captioning on this video has a scripture option. Mm. Fuck yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah, if you click on scripture, it'll tell you in the closed captions where in the Book of Mormon we are minute to minute in the video so you can follow along. Oh, yeah. and I just realized, because I saw that option, I turned that option on, I thought, well, this is fucking stupid. And I turned it back on to like regular subtitles. But I also noticed there was a Spanish scripture option and I didn't think to click it. But like knowing that it's just where you are in the book, right. how is the Spanish going to be different? Yeah, that's Because <laughs> great... it's just the name, which is like Nephi. So they're not going to translate that to... El <laughs> Neferino. Exactly. <laughs> Eleven, twelve. <laughs> <then. laughs> They use the same numerals as us, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just me doing the senior pet's voice. Yeah, yeah of course. Just occasionally some of them got like an upside down exclamation mark to begin yeah, with. Yeah. Like an <laughs> mark, yeah. All right. So, okay. So then we set out on, on our camel train. 
Yeah, and they're an eight camel family. You know, someone's mm-hmm. doing well for themselves there. Yeah, they're a jewel yeah. encrusted cup kind of kind of family. Yeah, <laughs> and they gave these camels. I'm gonna say a quarter of the frames they need. Oh my to god. Be "Quote unquote animated." It it looks like a child without manual dexterity playing with a flip book. That is just like <laughs> ah, it looks ah. like it. Re- it reminds me animation wise of like video games in the eighties, right? Where they're like, "Okay, you got three fucking frames. What are you gonna do with them?" Yes, just like blunk, 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 yeah. blunk as the camels move. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. So yeah, so they they're they're walking along on their camels. The bad brothers, Layman and Lemuel. Sure to hate dad and his stupid holy visions. Oh, sorry. We also get the daughter complaining, though. Like, are we there yet? Daughter moment, too. Yeah. Told you she'd be back. Yep. <laughs> and that's, I, I wasn't sure because I've not read the Book of Mormon. I thought I, I was thinking, are they going to like camel all the way to Utah? Is that what their plan is here? <laughs> it's not. But for a moment, I thought it was. <laughs> no, Marsh. They take submarines. No, yes. they don't take so that uh, other people took submarines earlier. They're going to build a boat by mm. looking at what other boats look like really, right. really yep. hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's true. <laughs> it is stupider than what I thought. That's right. <laughs> that motherfucker was tight like a dish. Like tight unto, a dish. Unto, <laughs> unto, like unto a dish, yeah. I don't want to piss off the uh, Latter-day lesbians again. So, all right. Nephi's little brother is a total askus. We learned that on this trip. Nephi and his little brother, they trust dad in his visions, but Lemuel and Laman don't. And after we establish this, we get this just insanely long, nauseous pan of the desert. 20 seconds. I, I rewound and checked. They end the scene with a 20 second pan over a still of the desert. It's not even an animated yes. desert. There's no, nothing no, no. moving. It's still. This is a 24 minute movie. So that pan <laughs> is like more than 1% of the runtime. <laughs> It's amazing how much they had to pad time in their animation to get to 24 minutes. So, okay. So then we cut to some morning or another on the trip. They've set up their their tent, right? Right. And so I I, I had a good look at this tent setup. For one thing, they stake the tent into a solid rock down the right-hand side. There's a rocky outcrop and they (laughs) have put wooden stakes. That must have taken them so fucking long. (laughs) Yeah. Outside of the tent is a small fire pit made out of stone blocks Mm -hmm. that they must have brought with them on the camels, I guess. Yep, there's one dedicated camel for the fire pit, yeah. Yeah, Mm -hmm. well, there's only three camels visible, so I don't know if they killed and ate five of the camels (laughs) at this point. And make it. And, And one of the camels is very clearly eating the tent. Which I can only assume is like a protest at the fact that they've been saddled overnight while tied up. It's just, I'm going to eat this fucking tent. I've got nothing else I can eat. Yeah. So fucking dumb. Yeah, but this is where Lehi remembers that they actually should have grabbed the brass plates before they left Jerusalem. They need those because otherwise, when they get to the promised land, they won't have a Bible. I guess the brass plates have the Bible inscribed on them. Mm -hmm. Right. They didn't think to transfer that onto a parchment so it'd be like a bit easier to move around and stuff. Sure didn't. Although they don't have to worry about moving stuff around because the tent they're in, and this was blowing my fucking mind, this tent is so fucking lavish. They left on eight camels. This tent has two or three different rugs on the floor and hung on the walls. They've got cushions. (laughs) They've got an entire treasure chest in the tent. (laughs) Mm -hmm. This this is like when Nicola packs for a trip. Like you didn't see (laughs) our room at the pajama party, but there was a treasure chest there. I saw a Nicola's treasure (laughs) chest. Yeah, there was a treasure chest. I thought the rugs on the walls were weird, but now I get it. Now I do get it. Yeah. 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 And I I love this because, so whenever I read the Book of Mormon, right, it's always, who is Joseph Smith griping with that he is secretly encoding it into the Book of Mormon? Mm -hmm. And this scene is a great example of that because the brothers, of course, don't want to go back because it's dangerous and Nephi will. And Nephi sort of turns to camera and does a like, whatever God wants us to do, we will never be harmed doing also, stop arguing with Joseph yep. and <laughs> yep. stop letting your fucking wife look at the pages, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> also, like, just because the listeners need to get a sense of how bad the dialogue is in this, I actually transcribed that bit that you just did, Eli, word for word from the film, and it goes, I'll go and do the thing which the Lord has commanded, for I know the Lord gives no commandments to the children of men without preparing a way for us to do what he commands. It's, oh my God. Think of a synonym. Jesus Christ, give me one <laughs> synonym. God is asking me to look in a thesaurus real quick. <laughs> yeah. 
So, but and then and they're like the brass plates. It'll be impossible to get those. Laban has them, and they're like Laman, and they're like no Laban. That's a different character, and they're like Lehi. Mm -hmm. He's like no Laban. And he's like Limhi. He's like that's a different guy. <laughs> Leahona. He's like no, no those are things. <laughs> <laughs> a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, but no, but they got they have to go back and get the brass plates from Laban. And of course, Layman and Ye Lemuel hate their dad and think that's a stupid idea. Yeah. Oh, God. And this is where we see like, the, they're starting the journey back and the camels look so annoyed that they have to go back. It's, it looks like they're sort of five minutes into the car journey and then someone realizes they've left their sunglasses at home. And it's like, no, it, it's fine. It's only five minutes. We can turn back around. It's not a, <laughs> it's not a problem. We can go back and get them. It's that for brass plates and camels. It's different for blue eyed people, Marsh. It's different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I loved that they kept the Blackstone thing from the Book of Mormon because it's just such a useless thing for the plot of the book and they kept it in the animated movie. Yeah, well, right. So, well, they got to get 24 minutes somehow. So they're all drawing lots to see who's going to go and get the brass plates from Laban. But right before they draw lots, they all have this conversation where Laban and Lemuel are like, well, I'm not fucking going. And Nephi's like, well, I'd be happy to go because obviously God will make it easy for us to do since he asked us to do it. I'm like, then why the fuck are you drawing lots? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? So, but they draw lots. Laban gets the black stone. And of course, we, as we know in the Book of Mormon, black is bad. So he has to do it. Foreshadowing. Yeah, right. <laughs> Literally shadowing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. And Nephi's like, hey, you know, I'll go. If you don't want to go, I'll go. And he's like, I'll be damned if you're going to let, let you go and get all the glory and everything. I'll go and do it. Oh, God, it's so ridiculous. Whiny Layman is, is annoyed both at having to go and at the prospect of not being able to go. It's just yes. everything is pissing him off. Yeah. yeah. Just standing at the door. You're opening a screen door for him. Do you want to go in or out? <laughs> yes. In or out? Interrupting Marsh's record. Yeah, right. <laughs> you got to listen to the patron extra. Yeah, story. right. No, <laughs> yeah. Right on there. So we cut to Layman trying to sweet talk Laban out of the plates, right? He's like, hey, why don't you give me the brass plates? We cut to Laban and he's just this, you know, the 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 80s cartoon debaucherous guy, except instead of a like a giant turkey leg, he's eating an apple the whole time. An apple. Yeah. I mean, it's an apple the size of his head, but still, because right. they've done it as like this like ostentatious over the top kind of like wealth. He's so rich. He's got literally strings of gems just draped off every surface like that. The lights mm -hmm. have got gems draped off them. That's quite confusing because he's also got like a bowl of fruit in front of him and it makes it look like the grapes are all so gems. It's that confusing. <laughs> right. He's yeah. got a treasure chest in the room just open with everything pouring out. But to make him look extra greedy, he's eating an apple. Which an is, apple. Which is not what you'd associate with greed. All loud and gross. Yeah. Yeah. I want to talk about the failure to animate this apple. <laughs> right, because and they it starts strong, like it really looks like an apple, and then he takes a bite and it turns into ball with a white circle yeah, in it for the rest yeah. of the scene. Yeah. Well, as I'm looking at it, I'm like, well, you know, wouldn't that normally be something like a big turkey leg or something like that? And I, I guarantee that the animator was like, I don't know how to draw a turkey. I legs. can't. Do that <laughs> seems really <laughs> complicated. There's a bow and meat, and I just yeah. Mm. I, I was surprised that no one in the scene kept pointing out. Like, I'm sorry, is your apple phasing in and out of existence? <laughs> yeah. It seems like it might be. <laughs> also. The, the fucking facial expressions that, that everybody's doing here, it, it felt like this animator wanted to make sure that he had a short reel that had all the facial expressions in it, right? <laughs> so fucking weird. But ultimately, though, Laban says, no, I'm not giving you the brass plate. There's a great moment where Laban's like, so let me borrow the plates of brass. And he's like, why'd you <clears> say <throat> borrow all weird like that? Why'd you, <laughs> why you, you did. just say it normal? You said it weird. Yeah. But he says, no. He's like, you can't go. So Layman goes back and he tells everybody about his failure. Yes, they have another sad meeting at the rocks and the animation is so bad that rather than sitting on a rock, it just looks like one of them is squatting in front of the rock like he's about to do <laughs> yes. a shit in front of the rock. <laughs> right. Yeah. But Lemuel's like, well, if, if uh, Layman can't do it, nobody can. We should give up. And Nephi's like, I'll do it. So... Then we cut to we, we cut to them at their house. They're gathering up all of the riches that they left behind when they moved in the middle of the night. They've got so much gold. There's so much stuff in this house. Like how rich were these fuckers the entire time? Mm -hmm. And to begin with, I didn't recognize that it was their house. I wasn't paying full attention when they were in their house. Earlier, oh, so you just like had them just, robbing some other fuckers. They just looted <laughs> some words. Like, well, we can't get the brass plate, but let's just loot these fuckers on the way out. Yeah. So yeah, but but at one point Lemuel picks up that jewel encrusted 
cup from earlier, mom's favorite jewel encrusted cup. And he's like, oh, I'm not giving them this. And he's like, no, you give them everything. Because apparently they're gathering up all the gold so that they can buy the brass plates from Laban. <laughs> right? So, and this is, we're getting into my best worst. This is Nephi's plan. So they gather everything up in four giant bags of gold. They, they go to take it to Laban and Laban's like, no, this isn't enough. Well, also like, to be fair, he's not exactly lacking in the stuff made from gold department. Nope. Everything in this room is is made of gold. His wooden table is somehow made of gold. That's how much gold this guy has. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. And he's like, well, also, like, I was, you guys left town because I was going to kill you. And now you've just brought me all of your riches. Like, I'm just going to yes. keep them. And they're <laughs> yeah. like, fuck, this was a bad plan. So, but the, so, so he's like, he calls for the guards. They all grab their, their gold and run. And he yells, guards, guards, right? Like you do. And then we don't see any gods. And my theory was like, no, it's just Laban's crazy. He has no gods. He's just, everybody somehow like believed him. But, yeah. <laughs> he just yells that yeah. sometimes. My my theory was that the animators were like, look, we're not going to do a whole bunch of fucking guards, okay? It'll take forever. <laughs> you get two gods. You're allowed two gods in this film. And they're all, they're also like, they're all carrying a bag of gold the size of themselves yes. as they run away. Well, you know, it's an important part of this cartoon to establish that someone very much could run with a bag full of gold. Yes, right. They they would, would, <laughs> gold, gold weighs nothing in the Mormon verse. Yes, yeah. exactly. So yeah, then we get this chase scene and I love this fucking chase. So they split up. They're right. They're right. Like Nephi's like, I'll take the cowardly brother with me. You two go to the city gate and, and make sure they keep it open until we get there. Oh, and I love the splitting up. I love splitting up because they're like, we'd better split up. But first, let's stand here in the middle of the town square while we bottom out the admin on who goes with who to where. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, so they, they, well, they can't have these characters running and talking at the same time. The animators can only do so much here. So they go to run. We, we follow Nephi and Lemuel. Nephi drops his gold. Right, his bag of gold, and he's like, Lemuel, drop your gold. You'll never get away while carrying so much heavy stuff. And I'm like, he's he's after your gold, Laban is. Yeah. If you just left the gold, he wouldn't chase you. No, he would not. Yeah, absolutely. So <laughs> this, is, this is so fucking dumb. But Lemuel would be damned. He's not going to drop his gold. He doesn't want to be poor, right? But as they're running away, one of the guards throws a knife, and it kind of tears open Lemuel's bag. And he starts dribbling out gold like a trail of breadcrumbs. Yes, and Lemuel goes, I think I'm getting stronger. I wrote my notes. Why would that be your guess? Yes. <laughs> it's a very small moment, but the first time we see the guards, the first thing we see is their shadow appearing. But the shadow is way too long and thin. And I really wanted them, like when they finally get there, to be like a massively tall, really thin guard. <laughs> yes. Slender Man is one of the Jerusalem guards. Yeah, yeah, That's right. what he did. All of the guards stood on top of each other's shoulders in one guard's <laughs> uniform like they're trying to get into a cinema. <laughs> so then... <laughs> <laughs> so then we cut to the other brothers, Layman and uh, Sam, and they've made it to the world's squeakiest city gate, right? With a wooden wheel. Do wooden wheels squeak particularly? I thought that's a very metal on metal kind of noise. Now, I want to point out, this is not in the Book of Mormon. So I no. don't know what they thought this... Did they think this was comedy? Because the guard at, with the wooden wheel is operating the gate kind of like a Zelda game, right? Where you're stepping on a switch and the thing happens, stepping off the switch and it stops, stepping right. off the switch and yep. it happens. Yep. Stepping off. And so they're basically feeding gold into him like some kind of weird meter. Yes, right. Like a like a vending machine. He, they, they, they hand him this gold dish and they're like, hey, op keep the gate open. He's like, this has bought you one minute. One minute. And so now every minute they have to give him another gold item out of their bag to keep the gate open. Yeah, it's one large golden plate per minute, which I think is still cheaper than New York parking rates, but still it's 100%, a lot. 100%, yeah. <laughs> but they don't just give him the whole bag. They keep going like, oh shit, he's lowering the gate again. Yeah, yeah that's right. Here's, here's ah, one there more thing. Yeah, again, right, yeah. right. <laughs> and we get to them like out of gold, which means they've handed over everything they own. A bag full. For one minute at the time. That, that means this chase has been going on for like, 35, 40 minutes for the right. other two brothers to get to where the first two brothers already are. How long is this chase? Yeah. We see Nephi and uh, Lemuel climbing over a wall at one point. 
the climbing over a building that cannot possibly be the optimal escape right. route through a yes. city to like scale a building. Yeah, right. This isn't fucking Assassin's Creed, y'all. So, but then they 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 slip out of the gate. There's a great moment where <laughs> Nephi's running at and he turns back and he goes, "Lemuel, hurry!" And I'm like, "He's hurrying, dude. He's just not as fast as you. Stop being an asshole." Yeah, he is hurrying. There is a moment for that where they run out of all their gold and then the gate's like, gate guy's like, you've got no gold now. And there is a moment where the brother realizes he's out of gold and he looks like he's trying to work out how he could pay for one more minute. And I thought, <laughs> he's seen the Fire Festival documentary, hasn't he? he? That's what he's seen. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> all right, well, I'll tell you what, this is a, a random spot to take a break, but we're trying to fit two videos into our three-segment format, damn it. So we're going to take a break. And when we come back, there'll be even more bullshit about... Nephi and the Brass Plates. I've had it with your lies, Nephi. Take that! Layman, do not strike your brother, for God has chosen him to lead your people. An angel? Yes. Release your brother and heed my word. Wow. I'm sorry, Nephi. <sighs> no problem, Layman. Now, let's make it to the city and fetch Father's plates. Are you trying to kill us, you fool? Take that! Uh, ah, uh. Dude, what the fuck are you doing? Sorry, sorry, I just I got carried away again. Okay, to, but to be very clear, you've seen an angel, right? Just come down to Earth and tell you not to kill your brother. You got it? Got it, got it. No killing my brother. Uh, Wait, Layman! Sorry, he was. That was two for flinching. Just cut it out, okay? Or I'm turning you black. Sorry, you'll you'll do what? Not now, Levi. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with Nephi and his brothers regrouping at a pile of rocks, while Layman rightly points out what an in incredibly shitty best worst fucking plan Nephi actually had. <laughs> and if I can part the curtain slightly before we get into this scene, no illusions. I love our friend Michael Marshall and I am honored that he joins us as often as he has. But he does a terrible job of getting us into our notes. So as we have mentioned on the show before, we write a little header of each scene and then we all put our jokes in, uh -huh, right? Uh -huh. And we'll usually write the first sentence of a scene or a, a, a piece of writing, right? If it's like 44 A little dialogue or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Marsh, yeah. who got to the notes first this week, decided to introduce this scene with the heading Breathless Recriminations. I need a fucking dictionary to get into my... I know it's for this podcast. That is an excellent description of what how this scene starts. Because they're like they're really panting, they're out of breath, and they're pissy. Oh my god. No, like wait, wait until he starts trying to open scenes with and it came to pass. I'm like, I have no fucking idea where you are. You could be anywhere in this video. This is Mormonism, dude. I mean, you did pass over a previous one, which I labeled establishing shot of somewhere we haven't seen before, question mark, disestablishing shot. Yeah. Right. So okay, but yeah, but so let's consider how bad Nephi's plan really was, right? Because they started out without the brass plates. Mm. Now they have no brass plates. They've lost three quarters of their wealth, right? The only one who got their money out was uh, was Laban. And the city guards are out there trying to kill them. <laughs> yeah, Nephi's totally fucked this. He absolutely deserves uh, everything he gets here. Yeah, right. And the funny thing is, right, like, I don't... I don't know. I find myself psychoanalyzing Joseph Smith a lot whenever we read yeah. or talk about uh -huh. Mormonism. And there's something very Joseph Smithian about Nephi being the oppressed protagonist who can't stop fucking up and pissing yes. off all the law enforcement <laughs> around him. And getting beat up all the time, right? Because like, like, like Nephi gets beat up more than John Wick, right? In the scene <laughs> over the course of this fucking book. Yeah. Right. So, but he's like, he's got this terrible fucking plan. And Layman is like, you fucking idiot. Now we've lost all our money. You threw a fourth of it away. He dribbled a fourth of it out behind him like fucking gunpowder in Yosemite Sam's pants or some shit. And this asshole bought us 13 minutes of open gate with a, a quarter of our family's wealth. Nobody got anything out but me. He starts hitting Nephi and I'm like, yeah, right? Like I'm team Layman. When he picks 100%. up the stick and starts trying to beat him to death, I'm like, oh yeah, that's a little much. But Nephi probably does deserve to get this shit 
kicked out of him a little. I mean, they really do beat the shit out of him with that. Also, it just occurred to me, why didn't they wait with the gate guy and just pay him when they needed the gate to be opened again? It just occurred Seems to me. Seems like a great idea. <laughs> Stand with him and then hand him yep. a golden we plate. We really only need basically. one minute. Which yeah, exactly. it, it depends on which minute. Yeah. So. <laughs> I bet, oh God, I bet one of them uh, during this meeting is like, fuck, that's what we should have done. Oh my God. <laughs> that's why they're so breathless you recriminatory. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so but he, they're beating the shit out of out of nephi and all of a sudden this angel appears out of nowhere and he goes uh oh, you gotta stop beating him up actually he's in charge now and uh <laughs> he's just doing his best here okay yes yeah. <laughs> the angel is being played by kenny rogers as well thank I think, at this you point. Clearly. Clearly. Again, back to the praise because I do like to compliment Sandwich. Marsh, you fucking nailed it. This angel looks <laughs> exactly like Kenny Rogers. 100%. <laughs> 100%. And even sounds like him. The guy doing the voice clearly is going for Kenny Rogers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the angel's like, stop beating him up. And then he waves his hand and he makes all of his bruises, quote unquote, go away. Yeah, they mm -hmm. rub out all the cross hatching on his arms. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And and then the angel disappears. It's like, all right, Nephi's in charge now. Bye. <laughs> and then and Lemuel is like, I don't know about that pale, glowy I bastard. I don't know about the <laughs> you're in charge thing. <laughs> I stopped hitting you with a stick because we had company, but I'm not just gonna let you be in charge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Layman's like, I don't know about all this. I'll I'll play along for now. But the angel tells him, go back to Jerusalem. God will. I don't remember the exact phrasing, but God will like deliver. Laban to you or whatever. Yes. Yeah. So they get back to the Jerusalem gate. Laban and Lemuel are like, we're not going in. Fuck it. This technically counts. We are over the city line. <laughs> we did what the angels wanted. The Heath and Wright school yes, right. of, yeah, of exactly. following God's commandments. <laughs> right, right. Let's wait for God to deliver him like, like the angels said. I think you'll find I am in the township of Jerusalem <laughs> right now. <laughs> <laughs> so... Yeah, so Laban's like, I've gone far enough. Nephi's like, I'll go. Sam's like, I'm an ass kiss. I'll go with you. He's like, no, I want to do this alone. Yeah, because he said like, oh, you know, the Lord will protect me. And I wrote, oh, I really want to like walk into Jerusalem and then immediately get killed. Like one step into Jerusalem, yeah. bang, <laughs> insta death. Yeah. <laughs> so, you're right. But so then we cut to Laban. Laban is very drunk. He's drunkenly walking out of a bar now. He's drinking out of that cup. He stole the cup, I guess, of the... Uh, that the mom liked so much. Yes. He's full on Marsh on the last night of QED right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, drinking uh, his favorite magenta colored wine. It's definitely yes. magenta colored. <laughs> At one point, it's like dribbling from his mouth like he just went down on Grimmers. That's how magenta <laughs> that stuff is. <laughs> so, so yeah, so he's he's wandering around expositing. You know, he's, he's like, I'm drunk and I... I'm sure helpless right now. I yeah. won the movie, I bet. He appears to have made up a thievery-based drinking song about the evening's events, which, yes. can I say, impressive. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. You still got it. So, yeah, but so he passes out in the street. And then we cut to Nephi sneaking in past the, the sleeping gate guard. He comes across Laban, you know, drunk and passed out in a ditch somewhere. Mm. And the Kenny Rogers angel appears and says... Just murder him. Yeah. Murder him. Just grab his sword and, and chop his fucking head off. It is the cartoon <laughs> angel on the shoulder moment, except there is no devil because the angel's like, fucking kill that guy. Yes. 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 <laughs> and I wrote like, oh, is this going to be like a lesson that angel Kenny Rogers is teaching? Yeah. You know, it's like, you, you didn't expect him to kill him. It's like, is the lesson going to be, you got to know when to slay him, know when to save him? <laughs> <laughs> you got to know when to leave him. <laughs> No when to leave him. Uh, yeah, so, oh, so, phenomenal. We, we, <laughs> I'm so sad Anna's on vacation. We could have had that at the commercial <laughs> break. <laughs> you guys got to tell me this shit ahead of time. But again, you want to psychoanalyze Joseph Smith. How about this shit, right? Because he comes across the guy passed out and the angel's like, grab his sword and kill him. And and Nephi's like, are you sure? that? Because that's like so cowardly and, and grossly inappropriate for the crime of refusing to sell us his shit. Yes, you right? don't get because the, the angel makes out like he's like Nephi is in the right here. But no, you don't get to kill a guy because he won't give you the thing that you want that belongs to him. That's not allowed. Right. Well, and, and he's like, he, Nephi's like, are you sure? And the angel's like, it's going to be way easier to, to steal his shit if he's dead, man. I mean, yeah. he, he has got a point there. He has got a point. No, that is true. <laughs> yeah. But they're trying to make out that, like, this is the trolley problems. Oh, is it, it's better to, to kill one man so that, like, loads of others may live. But, like, the trolley problem is somewhat undermined by us seeing Laban 
passing out in these like weird, embarrassing pause where he's completely helpless. Right. Like, that undermines the uh, the whole thing a bit. Yeah, he's not the trolley. He's the guy laying on the fucking track here. Yeah. Well, and then also like, the, the, so let me give the, exa- the exact fucking line, right? Because it's again, it's straight from the Book of Mormon. He says, quote, it's better for one man to perish than to let a whole nation dwindle and perish because of unbelief. <laughs> and I'm like, how bad is it? The thing that bothers me most is the double use of the word perish there. <laughs> right? Like, it's like, it's like, I'm just see, happy there wasn't a treble use. That's their normal really style. Yeah, 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 right, yeah. And no, and it came to pass. Yeah. Rule of threes. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So, but Nephi kills the unconscious man in cold blood in the in children's cartoon. cartoon. Yeah. For children. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And that's that. He might as well turn to camera all covered in blood and be like, eh, ain't I a stinker? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so, and then we cut to a we cut to a dude that we've never met. This is Zoram, the treasurer, I guess Laban's treasurer. Right? The slave he steals. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. He's got like a giant golden box and he's just talking to himself. This guy we don't know about how heavy this golden box is and how much he likes it. That's all the context we're given here. Mm -hmm. I thought these were the brass plates. They're not the brass plates. They look identical to the brass plates. But like uh, this is this leaves us nothing to work with here. Yeah. Uh, Can I say something from my heart? Zoram is the only character in this movie who is wearing a yarmulke. We're in Jerusalem, so presumably a lot of people would be wearing a yarmulke. You would think. But the only character they've chosen to wear a yarmulke is the one whose job it is, is to count yes. the gold. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Feels a little on the literal nose, if you know right. Yeah, a <laughs> little bit, yeah. He is quite like wisecracky as well. He's got like a wisecracky kind of Hollywood Jew kind of thing going mm-hmm. on as well, like Hollywood Jewish character. Yep. Oh, silence from Eli, like I've just said something really offensive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually canceling you on Twitter as we speak right yeah, now. Eli's like, I can't imagine a wise cracking Jew. I don't even know what that yeah, even looks exactly. like. What? what? <laughs> There's nothing wise about my cracking. <laughs> <laughs> you know this most of all, Mark. <laughs> But then, so there's a knock on this guy's door. Zoram goes to check it out. And it's Nephi, but he's dressed in Laban's clothes. And I wrote in my notes, and wearing the Juggernaut's mask. It, a perfect metaphor. Yes. No illusions. That is exactly what he is wearing. Which at least it's that and not fucking Laban's face, which is what I thought. I thought initially he's cut off his face, but couldn't get the mouth right and just left the yeah. mouth off. <laughs> Have you tried taping another man's lips to your lips, Marsh? Because it is hard. I've tried it and it is difficult. No, it is tricky. It's good because they don't move right. So if it's not Laban's face, this guy is in brown face or at least three quarters of him is in brown face and then a quarter (laughs) is still just him. Right. He's just in a cowl of brown face. It's so Mm. fucking weird. And the guy's like, oh, it's it's it must be Laban because is wearing Laban's cloak. It's (laughs) this Bugs Bunny level fucking disguise of stupidity or whatever. He comes in and he's like, and he starts doing his Laban voice, right? He's like, I demand the brass. He sounds like a little kid trying to sound like an adult on the phone, right? Yeah. Yeah. I demand the brass plates. But that's not how Laban talks. No, No, it isn't. Mm -hmm. (laughs) He didn't have a particularly deep voice, but this guy's doing fucking Christian Bale's Batman or something. (laughs) And this is where we discover that the juggernaut mask that he's wearing was supposed to just be shadow from the cloak over his face. Mm. Right. But these animators are so fucking bad that it looks like a juggernaut mask. Well, you know what had to happen, right? They they must have tried to brown out his face in shadow and they were like, ooh, guys, we're actually kind of going to need that look for a couple of no, no. later. <laughs> so, um... But the thing is, I've put the picture in the notes here. The brown of the shadow is lighter than the brown of the cloak. So that the, somehow the shadow is lighter than the thing that's obscuring. Yes, yeah. Other than <laughs> it's very confusing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, but we get that he's like, "I want the brass plates," and Zoram's like, "Well, you're wearing the correct cloak, so you must be uh, entitled to all these treasures. Let me grab those for you." Feels like a lazy RPG. You know, one of those RPGs where you just like have to be holding the one object to walk through the right door. Yeah, right. It feels yeah. like that. The religious text. Right. So he's, and then he gets the brass plates and he's like, Zoram, come with me. And we have no fucking idea why. We will never have any fucking idea why. But they leave the city together 
They do. And also just a very small thing on the brass plates. Did we all notice that the brass plates were ring bound? Oh, yeah. So they took it. They, they had it like okay. a little ring binder for them. So, Marsh, this is the deep lore, so I can understand why you wouldn't understand it. Okay. So part of the purpose of this cartoon is to model what will eventually be the golden plates of Nephi, the thing that... Joseph Smith absolutely had in his hat, but wasn't allowed to show anybody mm -hmm, except mm -hmm. for those five guys, except for one of them who later said that he didn't get to see it. You know, mm -hmm. the golden plates. So what they're trying to do with this brass plate scene is like acclimate us to the idea that plates might look like that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh <-huh. laughs> so, yeah. So when they leave the city and, and the brothers see him coming and he's like, oh, look at the cloak that can only be Laban run. Right. And he's like, no, guys, I'm not. It's not Laban. I'm Nephi. And then Zoram, who's going with him, he's like, oh, fuck. Did you are you wearing his face like a juggernaut <laughs> cowl? Right. <laughs> and so Zoram tries to run up. Nephi tackles the shit out of him. It's like, so funny. <laughs> it's real good. And, and the, all the brothers gather around and they're like, murder him. Why don't you kill him? Why don't you just kill him? That'd be the easiest thing to do would be to murder him. And Nephi says, hey, why don't you come with us, Zoram, and, and be our servant instead of Laban's? And he's like, that's a great idea. I'll do that of my own free will. Yeah. yeah. He says, <laughs> instead of being a servant, how about you come with us? All you need to do is pledge your loyalty to us. That, that kind of sounds like still a servant. It's pretty that's much the like same so funny. Thing. Yeah, because again, this happens in the book of Nephi, right? And the choice is either die or continue being not a slave, but you'll Hang out with us. Work for us for free. Yeah, right. Good thing he didn't have any like family or friends in town <laughs> yes. that he didn't want to immediately leave for all time, huh? Yeah, because like in Jerusalem, he's not a slave anymore. You've killed his his owner, uh, his his master. I presume if he's Laban's slave, Laban's dead. So this guy could just like go and be free, I guess. Mm -hmm. He's got access to all the gold. You would think. Mm. So okay, so but then we we cut back to mom and dad at camp. <laughs> They see the the sun's returning. There's much rejoicing, right? The narrator cuts in to say, and then dad taught us all the stuff that was in the brass plates, which is why we'll know that later. And this is so funny. And also I wrote this story down. Yes. <laughs> and this is where he writes down the thing into the gold plates, which one feels like you're kind of one-upping God by making your plates gold and his plates brass. Oh, yeah. interesting. But also... It's just super funny because I had forgotten about the weird double plates confusion that's in the book of Nephi. And mm -hmm. it makes it even dumber to watch it in cartoon form where it's like, oh, okay, we're learning out of the brass plates. I guess I'll write my story, which includes those plates into the gold plates. <laughs> so, so fucking Dumb. And he's just writing on the gold with like an all like it's a, he's using it like a pen. You can't right. like I've never tried carving on gold, but I imagine it's not as simple as I like, just pick up a pen like implement and just, just start like nailed. doing calligraphy. Yeah, guys, I just had a huge realization. Nephi is the story of a guy who inscribed a book of brass plates into a book of gold plates. Is the book of Nephi the first house of leaves? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, so and then <laughs> <laughs> so then we get our credits, right? And, and there's a song about how fun it is to be a narc. <laughs> yeah. Tell God what he wants to hear. Yes. <laughs> Do exactly as you're told, even if uh, an angel tells you to kill a guy. Just right, it. Yes, it does. listen yep. to Kenny Rogers when he tells you to kill a sleeping man. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I love that song. Yeah, no, it's a good one. All right, so that's going to do it for Nephi and the Brass Place, but that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to watch an entire other video. So tell us, Marsh, what else will we be breaking down today? So we also watched the animated Book of Mormon colon The Tree of Life, which is episode, I want to say 11, some asterisk, it's hard to tell, uh, mm -hmm. of the series. Like, if this is episode 11, I don't know what happened in the intervening nine, but the plot has become... That time, Dad had a dream about a magic handrail, and that's yes. what we're going to watch. Right, if I, which, if I recall correctly, he dreams during that last video. Mm -hmm. Right, that makes sense, yeah. They're swooshing their doodly-doos hard here yes, in the right animated away. Book of Mormon, let me tell you. Right away. And Eli, how bad was this swoosh doodly-doo? Well, if you love my rule about not telling people you're not fucking about your dreams, but you wish it had a bit of lemonparty.com flavor. <laughs> you will love this movie. 
All right, so is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah. Can I go best, worst, failure to realize an innuendo? <laughs> because all the way through the 22-ish minutes of this, there is a lot of talk about holding on to rods, putting your hand on the rod, don't take your Grab hand off the rod. rod. Make sure you really really work that rod with the hand. Don't forget the, <laughs> to, to ha- do the, the little ball thing at the end of the, the, the rod. <laughs> Make sure you pay plenty of attention to that as well. It's a very rod-based episode. Yep. They, did they not know that that's also in the end? Or? Oh, we've, we've had a little fun with that one in the past, yeah. Mm. I'm going to go with the best worst... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's definitely a good one. I, I mm. will point it out when it comes. And mine's just a little one, but it bothered me so much watching it in animated form. Best worst, except this guy. This guy doesn't get punished for some reason in the metaphor. Why (laughs) would Aaron not get punished? It makes no (laughs) fucking sense. Yes, thank you. So, okay. So we're going to open this one up on a big title card that tells us we're going to be watching an animated version of a fake dream that a fictional person recounted in a record that doesn't exist. <laughs> so, so strap the fuck We're in. We're swishing all the doodly do doos this week, everybody. Yes. Yeah, and uh, there's something about this because it opens with like a title card, which kind of is like a disclaimer. And it says, we've created the animated, this animated story of his dream without giving an interpretation of certain symbols. What are the, I've not read the Book of Mormon. What are they missing out? Is this like with the Disney bit where they like put up a screen to warn about all of the racism, but like the opposite of that, where they <laughs> warn you that some of this wasn't racist? Right. They're warning us about the unsubtleness of the metaphor. Yes. And I love that they're like, you'll have to read the Book of Mormon if you want to know what it means. And it's like really the most obvious metaphor ever, which <laughs> you're going to further animate at the end because you don't trust us to get it. Yeah. Right, right. You'll have to read it. And I'm like, look, if, if reading the Book of Mormon makes your thing make more sense, you have fucked up in ways that we have never even dreamed of, right? <laughs> yeah. Da Vinci Code ain't got nothing on the yeah. animated Book of Mormon. Right. So so we get our opening line. The voiceover comes over and says, behold, I have dreamed a dream. And I'm like, yeah, it's the kind of writing that we expect out of, um, out of Joseph Smith. Yeah. I wrote in my notes, no, I have a dream, this movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Right. <laughs> He says he he dreamed that he came across this tree and it had on it the the whitest fruit that you'd ever seen. It was it was a fucking mayonnaise sandwich with bad rhythm, complaining about affirmative action levels of white. Right? <laughs> hey guys, I'm about to animate the fruit for our thing that represents salvation. Uh, should I make it look exactly like a ball sack? <laughs> yes, like a ball sack yeah, and an ass this. at the same time. Hundred percent of ball sack. Okay, I'll just make ball sack. I'll make a series of ball sacks hanging off a tree and. And everyone will rub their face against them in this children's cartoon. Yes, yeah, a lot of ball sex, and then those people will take nibbles and they rub their face, and they just like pop, just pop one in the mouth. Yeah, just yeah, gently. Just take yeah. a nice oh, big lick out of them. <laughs> yeah, well, and also he goes, "It's the whitest thing that's ever been whited," and it's like it's not as white as his beard. Like on mm. screen, we're looking at it, and we're like, "Well, it's kind of like like a mother of pearl." Yeah, it's like an off white. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, but he saw this white, white fruit and so he ate it because why the fuck not eat a random fruit that you've never seen before what could go wrong (laughs) and he immediately knew that it was the greatest of god's gifts and i'm like you have not used anal beads i think so (laughs) but anyway so but he's like i i love the fruit so much i wanted to give it to my kids so he looks around and he sees his non-shitty sons nephi and sam with with their mom with soraya Right. Right. And how I was unclear how long is meant to have elapsed since the first episode. You've now told me that this happens during the first episode, but it's a dream. He's dreaming his wife to be super older than she actually is. Yep. Because she's not this old in the actual episode. So that is a that's a weird element of your dream. Like I I'm just dreaming about what my wife will look like in a few decades' time and what one of my sons would look like a bit fatter. Like if he was just a bit fatter. With a mustache. Yeah. With a mustache. Well, so yeah, we should point out that like the all of the characters in this more or less look similar to the last video but not the same mm. especially nephi nephi looks way the fuck different in this one than he did in the last one yeah. right the only one that really looks exactly the same is laban so but yeah but this is where we introduce marcia's best worst this is where he says he yells out he calls out to nephi and to sam and to soraya he's like you must follow my rod yeah. Oh my God, there's no way they didn't know. No. It's so long, he might as well be like, aren't you going to make a joke? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> what <are> you, <laughs> you ever make a joke in school and the substitute or the teacher was like, do you want to make that joke again? Because they thought you were going to get shy. 
but you're me and or Noah, so you just made it louder. Yes. That's what this movie is doing. It's like, go ahead, make a dick joke. And I'm like, I will for a living. That's, Thank that's you, when I grab that's, my rod. That's how I learned about the callback. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so yeah, but so we, we pan over this, like this perilous walkway to this tree and there's a handrail all the way across it, right? That's the rod. You gotta, you gotta follow the rod. But like they seem confused as to where to go. They're like, oh, what do I do? Oh, I'll hold the hat. But like, why would you be confused? There is literally only one path across yep. this ravine and it has a handrail and it leads to the only thing you can see. Yep. Why would this be a difficult like path to, to find and follow? No shit. Right. So so they start like, I love Nephi. He's like, I'll, I'll lead mother. Follow me. And I'm like, oh, yes, ladies last. Very chivalrous of you. Um, <laughs> and then Lehi looks over. He sees his shitty sons. He sees... Laban and Lemuel, and he tells them, hey, come eat the fruit, follow the, uh, grab my rod and come follow the fruit. But Laban is like, fuck his rod. I bet we can find a better way to get there. Oh, yeah. Laban has absolutely no interest in holding his father's rod, which is a large departure from how gay corded this character has been in the first episode. They've really <laughs> taken a step away from that stereotype. Yeah, I wrote in my notes, let's all grab dad's rod. No, Noah's kids did that one. Let's do a different <laughs> no, one. No, no. <laughs> So yeah, but, but they're going to go off and find an easier way. Lehi is yelling, he's begging him to to hold on to his rod, but they go off to turn Native American and evil, apparently. But they think they can find an easier way across the ravine than the only visible path, which has an actual handrail attached it's to so it. Like, what are they expected to find? <laughs> yeah, but now Lehi sees a bunch of people following the rod. But also a lot of people don't follow the rod. Yeah. I would say numberless concourses of people. Numberless yeah. concourses of people. Are there. <laughs> Some people want to walk into the fog to circus music, apparently. Yes, <laughs> right. Well, and this is where we meet Jezebel and we get my best worst, right? Because so there's this chick and she's with her boyfriend and she's like, oh, you know, I don't think I want to follow the rod. And somebody comes up. And he's like, hey, you know, there's a great big party over at the not rod over here. And in the background, we hear this. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah, I love it so much. And every time for like the rest of the video, anytime anybody mentions the party, we'll get that little jazz. We will get like that, that little... lick. It's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's totally sweet. I thought, spoiler alert, the party is not going to end well. And I wanted so badly for there to just be one last sad. <laughs> <laughs> we don't get it. We don't get it, everybody. I don't want to get your hopes up. So she leaves and her, the boyfriend turns and goes, but Jezebel, wait. And we're like, oh, okay. I guess I know where we're going here. That's right, everybody. The Book of Mormon was too subtle for these cartoonists. They thought they needed to add a little, yes. little <laughs> hint here and there for us so we could really get this complex metaphor. Yeah. You know, and we, we've got to introduce another group of characters. This family here, there's a, there's a mom and her mom and her two sons, Abel and Aaron. They are also following the rod. Oh, did we get Abel? I knew there was Aaron. I didn't get Abel from it. So I wasn't paying yeah. that much attention at this point. <laughs> yeah, well, he'd, he'd done enough L names. He had moved on to A names at this point, apparently. Yeah. Mm. So, but Abel, the youngest son, is scared, but he holds the rod. But Aaron is a teenager and, God, he doesn't need a whole rod. Yeah. And now, to be fair, this is the most realistic thing in the Book of Mormon is a teenager just very obviously doing the unsafe thing because their mom is asking them like, nicely not to. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. But then, oh, we also cut to the stupid smart people. Yeah, right? Cam Pallon Rickman. Yeah, we got a Cam Pallon Rickman here. <laughs> I was so hoping they would keep this part because it says so much about you when you need to distinguish that smart people are going to say my thing is bullshit, but they're just... Wrong. Jealous of my smarts. Yeah, the smart people Anyone are like, who likes to learn is therefore evil is literally what they say at this point. Yes. It's amazing. Right, because the two guys, that there's, there's two guys and one guy says like, well, should we follow the rod? And the other guy goes, no, we are learned men. We should strike out and find new knowledge. And it's never in the obvious place. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? But yes, yes, they wander off. And speaking of wandering adrift from Lehi's rod, I feel like we need to do that for a minute as well. But we'll be back in a minute with even more of... The Tree of Life. My sons, my sons, come to me. Yes, father. What is it? Yes, tell us, father. I have had a prophetic dream. Oh, what did you dream, father? I dreamed that I stood beneath a great tree and on the branches was the purest, whitest fruit that I ever saw. Do you think the fruit stood for salvation, father? I... 
Were you? Yes. Yes, I do. Go, go on, Father. Well, I, I mean, Nephi's kind of ruined it now. I, I think. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry, Father. Yeah, go, go on, Father. Tell us anyway. All right. Ending spoiled, but fine. Anyway, I, I saw you and your brothers and encouraged you to come eat of the fruit. And I, I, I told you to follow the way of the iron rod. <gasps> the iron rod of scripture. Well, seriously, Nephi, what the fuck is this? Mad libs? Uh, uh, go on, father. Well, no, he keeps ruining my thing. I feel like I'm being heckled. Uh, please, father, I, I won't interrupt again. Fine. Fine, Okay. So anyway, some followed the rod, but others did not. Those who did not follow the rod fell and died. <gasps> like Bruce Willis at the beginning of Sixth Sense. All right, that's it. I'm the fuck out of here. Oh, Father, I'm, no. I'm sorry. No. This is, this is why everybody's trying to kill you, Nephi. It's this. He's got a point. <sighs> I know. <laughs> And we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with Nephi, Sam, and Soraya making all the way to um, the root of Lehi's rod. Okay, guys, I just realized we are making a podcast about a movie, about a story, about a dream inside a book. Are we the first House of Lee? <laughs> <laughs> Much better. Also, I have to point this out. Like, what the hell ever happened to the daughter? Yeah. Right? You remember the daughter. There was a daughter, and now we don't talk about the daughter anymore. I don't... Well, because I thought this was so much later, because this was like episode 11. I didn't realize it was happening at the same time. I assumed something happened to the daughter, and we don't talk about it anymore yeah, right. in those nine episodes. When like when Lemuel or Samuel got fat, something else all happened to the daughter. But <laughs> no, if this was his dream, oh my God, that means the dad is just dreaming about a world in which he doesn't have a daughter and that's his paradise i guess yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> and he's like and he's like hey guys i'm glad you made it all the way to the end of the rod check out my white ass fruit right so everybody it was a white ass fruit actually is probably the better yeah so everybody eats some 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 testicle fruit oh god and enjoys it quite a bit and way too like nephi eats that fruit way too centrally like yeah. nephi is tracing the alphabet on that fruit <laughs> <and throw it. laughs> but then it came to pass, and we haven't mentioned this yet, but the, the words "it came to pass" have already appeared like four fucking times in this in this part of the video. Yes, Marsh is annotating our notes at this point with "it came to pass" number four. Yes, <laughs> yeah, and then I wrote "fuck me" a mid scene. It came to pass. I'm gonna have to stop labeling these transitions with "it came to yeah, pass." Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, but they, but then it came to pass that there rose a great mist of darkness. But they were already in a mist. Yes. It said there arose a great mist of a mist of darkness, yea, even an exceeding great mist. But wasn't the whole point that it was already misty? This is a mist on a mist. That's why you needed the rod. Yeah. You don't put a mist on a mist. Like how could they see the new mist with all the old <laughs> mist getting in the way of it? Yeah. So. Exactly. And I wrote a bunch of notes while I was watching this movie. Like, it's so funny that the animators made Lehi's dream even dumber and even more complicated. No, this is accurate yeah, to the Book is. of Mormon. Yeah. I was misremembering. Sure how stupid this metaphor was. Yep. So we, oh, we cut back to the learned guys from earlier and they're lost and they sure do regret not following Lehi's rod now. <laughs> yeah. We're done with those characters. Yeah. yeah. And at some point, someone suggested to Joseph Smith, well, okay, what about all the people who seem like they're having a really good time not listening to a very obvious con man from upstate New York? Mm. Which means it's time to introduce the giant city, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Just just then, Lehi notices a gargantuan, iridescent city, a fucking, what, a large parking lot away from the tree that he's been standing yeah. under this whole time. How did he not spot this <laughs> massive building behind the tree earlier? Well, uh, there's a great, exceedingly great mist of darkness, actually, Marsh. <laughs> well, that's you... true, but I'd, I feel like the building was an easy thing for people in the mist to spot than the tree. Sure. Because the thing is, this is a mist. It's not a fog. It's just a mist. Like a fog, yeah, you're going to lose your way in a fog. <laughs> but a mist? <laughs> right. I think you can navigate in a mist relatively fine. Yeah, honestly, yeah. You're British, Marsh. It's like how <laughs> elves have dark vision. Yeah, know? right. <laughs> 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 So, yeah, but so I love to because the actual line in the scripture here is, the, you know, there was a great st building, whatever, whatever. And then the line is, and it was full of people. 
But the animators were like, fuck you. It was full of people. You will mm. see stationary <laughs> little circles with little lines under them in the background full of people. Now, wait a second, guys. It's a it's a tall and spacious building full of people who are laughing at Mormonism in a fog that no one can penetrate. I think the tall and spacious building might be QED. Oh, Have we considered? Shit. That makes sense. Have we considered? Let's, let's figure out how fast the fucking elevators are here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that makes sense, though, because all the people here look like they are drawn by L.S. Lowry, who was from Manchester. <laughs> oh, so there you go. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, this is a great moment where we zoom in on the full of people. We get another one of these like lazy ass attempts at a crowd. <laughs> There's like six or seven people at a time and only one of them moves at a time. Like one of them will mm -hmm. move the arm and then this one over here will smile and then this one over here will laugh. It's fucking awful. Yeah. Also, it's it's just a tiny detail, but I have to point it out. There's one of the one of the people leaving the rod to go to the large and spacious building is a wife, and she turns to her husband and she says, "I've missed out on too much." And his answer is, "No, you haven't." Yeah, what? <laughs> Religious patriarchy in a nutshell, everybody. I'm unhappy. No, you're not. <laughs> She's looking at this party. You know, she's looking at the party and she realizes she's missed out on all the drinking, laughing and fucking. Like she is about two steps away from joining the Patreon for this show. That's how close right. she is <laughs> to turning. Yeah, well, yeah, that's exactly it. We're the people in the iridescent, because they, they, they even say, and all the people in the iridescent tower who pointed and laughed at all the people following the rod and eating the fruit, and the, you can bet they're going to feel bad about that by the end of this story. <laughs> right? So everybody's wandering away from the rod. They all are going to the big party Instead, where presumably they become a stationary painting, right? Yes. We get a little uh, a teen peer pressure scene here where the boyfriend of one of the girlfriends is like, come on, babe, let's just try the tip of the great. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. There's also there's a, a couple who are like weighing up where they should go at the party in the same sense of like there are a couple who both want to go to an orgy, but neither wants to seem to the other one like they're too into the idea. Right. So they're just gently yeah. tipped on towards <laughs> it. Well, you you guys I can't relate events. to that statement, Marsh. I don't understand. <laughs> there's also there's also the cut to the fucking party. And there's a moment where this we see this one woman and she's just throwing money off of a off of a balcony or whatever. And there's like a fucking hyena laughing below it mm. or something. <laughs> Very confusing. Yeah. yeah. But then we cut back to Lim High. Now, so Lim High was Jezebel's boyfriend who watched her go to the party. And so now he's watching her just falling out of her clothes, talking to some other dude. And he's getting really jealous, but he keeps following the rod anyway. Right? He does. He eventually makes it to the tree. He wants to go to the fucking wine and hyena party over the tower, but he makes it all the way to the tree. And they give him a bite of the fruit. And he very clearly is like, well, I mean, it's fine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. He just drops it on the ground. Like, it can't have been that amazing if he no. just drops it on the ground. Because he, he drops it on the ground. And he's like, well, I'm going to go fuck my girlfriend. Jesus, this is not that good. <laughs> yeah. And then he punches Nephi on the way out, which I fucking yeah. loved. <laughs> it, it's worth getting to the end of the rod just so you can punch Nephi. <laughs> See, now that's a fruit I'm going to travel for. Come, oh, there you go. Come yeah. bowl chick Nephi. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, but so Limai goes, he runs off into the darkness. Meanwhile, Aaron, the teenage boy that was like turning gall into a verb earlier, mm. right? He's going his way further and further from the rod. Now, we should point out because like we saw this entire rod for at the very beginning when Nephi first saw it, he was like, and, and Lee, I was saying, hey, follow the rod. We panned all the way up it. It's 150 meters or so. Yes. Yeah. Right. It's like the, I have no idea why it's taken people so long. Well, sometimes it takes when you're working the road, sometimes it does take a while. It depends on what's going on <laughs> with Lehigh at the time. Well, especially if that rod's 150 meters long. I guess. And it's been worked by a lot of people. He just needs a moment. No, and then there'll be more yeah, yeah. in, in, a, in a moment. Yeah. Maybe if Jezebel was still there. <laughs> also, this is where there's like wind and stuff. And so people start being blown off the rod by the wind. It's like, well, if the wind mm -hmm. blows people away from the rod, that's not on them. You can't right. blame people for weather. You can't do that. Well, yeah, because it wasn't windy when Nephi got up. This isn't fair. Yeah. yeah. So, but then we find we see Limhi, the Jezebel's boyfriend, fall into this ravine, and then a great shit river explodes around them. 
Yeah, who put the filthy... Like, they call it like the, the filthy water fountain. It's not a water fountain. It's a fucking waterfall. But who put that right next to the tree of life in the first place? That's a bad <laughs> place for your shit river to be. Well, I mean, I, I'm wondering if... Because like, everybody up there has nothing to eat but fruit. Maybe that's the source <laughs> of the shit river, right? That's what mm. it... Honestly, you feed me nothing but pears that represent white patriarchy for a day and you are getting a shit oh, river. Oh, yes. You're getting one. Yeah. yeah. I mean, feed you anything for a day, we well, get the shit true. river. Well, that's true. That's, that's also true. true. That's fair. The shit river. It's fair. <laughs> so, but Aaron falls into the shit river too, the teenage boy. There's a weird moment where some character we haven't met falls, but his buddy catches him and they have this tearful, I can't pull you up, I'm so sorry moment but we've never for met so these long. characters and it goes on for mm. so long. And we don't care about them. No. And, and it's not in the book. Like none of this weird drama is in the book. So I don't know why the animators were like, they. we need a cliffhanger moment. I yeah. guess, yeah. Although seeing all these people complaining about the uh, a river full of shit did make me feel nostalgic for Britain. It made me feel like, oh, God, now I feel like <laughs> There it is, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so. I thought it was going to make you nostalgic for Paris, but you know, yeah, it's right. Different- <laughs> So, but but Aaron, we, we follow him along. He he finds a, like a I don't know a fucking corn kernel in the shit river or whatever. He climbs up it. Another guy tries to climb up and push him off, but he fights it and uh, presumably murders the guy, or I think he kills this guy. Yeah, which is wild because there's plenty of room on that rock for two yep. people. This is like a Titanic door situation. You can just be. Yeah, both I was of you gonna say Rose is just c- comes and clings to the other end. They both have to get off now. No, but so, <laughs> but that's the thing though. It's it's not even a matter of the door. Of the Titanic, unless, of course, there was just another boat just on the other side of the door, right? Because he climbs up and then he just steps over onto a big, mm. large area where he's got room to lay down. And, <laughs> and it's so fucking dumb. But so, but now he's going to climb. He's going to try to climb back up, and he, but he can't make it. He's like cry apologizing to God for letting go of the rod now. And can I say... What is this part of the metaphor, mm. right? What is what is the rock in the middle of the Dookie River in the metaphor of the? <laughs> yeah. Is it the refractory period after you jerk <laughs> off, where you you feel bad? <laughs> so, yeah, but Aaron realizes he can't climb up by himself. He just can't make it. So he gives. He he's gonna give up. He lets go, and just then Nephi catches him, and we pan up, and there's this whole fucking bucket brigade of people. Like going all the way back to the rod down the ravine, holding onto each other's hands. Like, remember the barrel of monkeys? Yes. It's like that. Exactly. Yeah. And that is not in the Book of Mormon, by the way. Nope. So, it's so stupid. In case you're wondering, the one part where someone who makes a mistake still is redeemable, that's not from the Book of no. Mormon. That's <laughs> the bullshit Richard Rich wanted to put in no, there. No, that kid died in the shit river in the fucking book. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There are 10 people who formed a human chain to rescue this one guy, presumably letting like a dozen other people fall off the rod and die in the process Obviously. just for this one guy. Not worth it. Yep. Game theory. Clearly. Yeah, but mom sure is relieved to see him. And then we cut back over to the party, right? Everybody's still laughing at Lehi. Even Layman and Lemuel are over there at the hyena party now, and, and Lehi is very sad about that. But just then, there's a great earthquake, and the city is falling apart. Now, that's right, great and spacious building. Yeah, motherfuckers. <laughs> now, as you can imagine, the animators of this film really went all out for the city <laughs> fall. There's mm. like nine animation. There's like nine frames of animation for this city falling apart. It's so cheap and shitty. We see uh, Jezebel, I guess, get what's coming to her. Yeah. Right? In this movie's disgusting estimation. Yeah, the guy she's with like abandons her immediately and then gets instantly smooshed, like debris smoosh immediately, the second he lets go of Jezebel. Yeah, right. The couple who just got to the orgy, they get instant smooshed before any action happens. I feel bad for those guys. They just got there. So unfair. Yeah, but so she gets crushed to death too. So do Layman and Lemuel, right? They get caught in the collapse as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we check back with the good fruit-eating people and they're like, hmm. Bummer. Yeah. Fucking bummer. There's one guy in the rod and he's like, ah, oh, beans. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. Right. Ne- Nephi starts walking back. And he's like, well, now we're going to have to clean up all that shit. Come on, guys. Right. That That's it. That's the whole yeah. fucking his brothers just died. Yeah. And then a fucking child starts singing in case this was too pleasant 
for us. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? They were like, guys, guys, look, I love the Book of Mormon as much as the rest of you, but this dream, it's it's so complicated and the metaphor is so hard. <laughs> mm -hmm. Why don't we play one of our nonsensical Mormon hymns and turn the tree into the literal clouds of heaven? You know, as a little hint for the folks at home. <laughs> well, it's so funny because we back away from the tree. And of course, your first thought is upon seeing this tree is like, wow, only like 11 people made it. So like everyone else died. Yeah, it's worth watching hundreds of people die because a dozen or so people got a magic peach that time. Yeah, Right, right. But I, what, I, what I would imagine is that like this is actually supposed to be a big crowd, but the lazy ass animators are like 11 fucking people. They get it. They get it. A bunch of people live, <laughs> right? But they back away from that. And yes, it all turns into clouds in case the fucking heaven analogy wasn't obvious enough for us. All right, well, I think everybody needs a minute to recover from that big reveal, so we're going to wrap up the video there. Marsh, thanks as always. Uh, always a pleasure. And while that does it for our review of the first two episodes of the animated Book of Mormon, that's not going to do it for this episode just yet because we still need to earn a paycheck again next week. So, Eli, tell us, what's on deck? Well, Noah, we'll be continuing with Mormon Movie Month, of course. We're going to move forward a bit in history to the life of Joseph Smith. Now, Thanks to Mormon Movie Month, we've heard retellings of this con man's story more times than I'd care to remember. But next week, we'll be spending time on a part of the prophet's life that we have barely grazed. His mid-jailbreak death. Oh, really? Will he use his magic powers and get shot anyways? <laughs> Tune in next week for Out of Liberty. Well, not all the way out, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 465 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Marsh for all his help today. Be sure to check the show notes for links to more stuff from him. And a perhaps even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an every version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Gay, The Citation Needed, D&D Minus, and The Skeptocrat, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email God awful movies at gmail.com. Jane Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Rise Lightning People Drafts on Mars. All the other music was written and performed by our audio engineer Morgan Clark and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Lucius. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. Now that he's told them about his dream, everyone had to fuck Lehigh, which I think is actually canonically how Mormonism works. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> Eventually, the animators did remember the scientist guy and the little sister. Those brothers turn black as punishment in a future episode of the animated Book of mm. Mormon, and I <laughs> can't wait. Morgan's band, Moody Boys, came out with a new single called, called Don Quixote About the Wind Farm. It's really good. You should check it out. It's good. You should check it out. So we watched... Your cat hated that joke, Mark. Can you hear the cat? Can you hear her? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, uh, yeah the brass band Christ that she's playing in in the background. Yeah, I noticed that. I was hoping it wasn't getting picked up because I didn't, I didn't want to turn on and shout, would you shut up, Mildred? She's speaking slightly <laughs> louder than you are. Mildred, what is going on? Are we done here? So that's the noise she makes when she's bringing me her toy mouse. So I'm, I may need to go and acknowledge the toy mouse, otherwise that may not stop. Just give me one second. I get it. Yeah, no, go ahead. No acknowledge worries. the toy mouse. Mildred, what's going on? You're here now. Okay, did you bring Mousy? You did bring Mousy. Okay, well, well done you. Okay, can we record now? Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, no worries, Kim. I'll give you the question again. Yeah, 100% keep all this. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Well, I, I, at least give me this as a, the, uh, as, a uh, as a Patreon extra. Oh, God, yeah. It's always easy. It's so easy because like then I start like going by when I hear you guys is four on a slight delay. It's so hard to keep on. Like, yeah, sorry, yeah. Sorry. Counting to five is trickier than it seems. Oh, to, to like nail the timing. Yeah, it's really difficult. Uh, no, I think just the counting part. Morgan, <laughs> Morgan has a degree in that shit. He knows, right? That's right. Morgan, it's like That's I'm doing it. like what you do as a as a percussionist. Uh, <laughs> Morgan achieved a lifelong first for me this week, which is that someone sent me music their band wrote. 
and it wasn't awful. Yes, <laughs> yes. I've, honestly, I've been singing that to myself all goddamn day. Never thing. in my entire I'm life has someone sent me a piece of music and been like, my I band would, wrote this and I haven't been like, been great. So I have to but come up with 27 topics of conversation mm. to distract this person with yeah. so they don't yeah. ever say, how'd you like it? Yep. Yeah, exactly. It's okay, yep. so our friendship's over now, then we can't talk no, ever unfortunately. again. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Eli died since. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. <clears throat> it's, guys, it's in my lifetime. It was like 78. 1978. Yeah, yeah. I was alive when that happened. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> yep. <laughs> And to be clear, they let people into the church before they acknowledged they have souls. Mm -hmm. The reason they weren't allowed to hold parsonship is they were like, but you don't have souls. So so why would they be in the church? Why would they join the church? Great question. Yeah. Great question, Mark. <laughs> it's like how women are in the church now. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. All right. Or black Mildred, people are in the Mormon church quiet? now, honestly. Yeah. Mildred, quiet. Yeah. <laughs> To just pack it in because Nicola's got Nicola's out for the night. Mm -hmm. uh, so Mildred is Mildred confused. Mormon? Is that what it is? Maybe she's oh offended my God, by what the if content. She's Mormon? We don't. Oh, oh, that'd that'd be awesome. You never know if you're getting a Mormon cat. Unusual mm. in in the UK. My but dog not is unheard Muslim. of. I've I've never seen her drink beer. I, she's yeah. not allowed like caffeine stuff. She's not mm -hmm. she, well. Mm -hmm. Although she does sniff around when I'm drinking a cup of coffee, but she never drinks any of it. So I think right. that's the kind mm -hmm. of the Mormon temptation thing going on, right? Right. Mm. Oh, can I tell you guys what I'm most excited for at the Salt Lake City show? What's that? They so Utah has a chain of drink restaurants that aren't like they they make special non caffeinated beverages, but they're just beverage restaurants, and they're as common as Starbucks in Utah, <laughs> and everyone drinks at them, and they they seem fucking awesome. I'm super excited. Oh, right on, awesome, nice. Also, they have the world's largest board game cafe. Yep, I'm going. Oh, really? I'll go with that. I'll go there with you. Going there hard. All right. Interstitial 2. Well, I'm going Wednesday. Oh, well, I won't go with you. Fun fact, Lucinda comes in yesterday and she goes, hey, it uh, turns out that we have stars. And I'm like, really? She's like, for the last two years. I'm like, really? So, <laughs> Give me some rocket money. And ho ho not even close. I know, Marsh. I am aware. Hey, guys. What are you? What are you doing? Ah, I'm trying to jump through these hoops that my wireless company gave me. Yeah, there's a lot of them. Yeah, but when I make it through all of them, I get a free cell phone. Wow, really? Uh, no, I I pay for it, but I can put it on my bill, and that like that lowers the costs of it. No, no. Uh, but you, could, I I pay for it there, right? Well, Eli, if you want to save money on your cell service, why not try Mint Mobile? What's Mint Mobile? I love a great deal as much as the next guy, but I'm not going to jump through hoops just to save a few bucks. It has to be easy. No BS. So when Mint Mobile said it was easy to get wireless for $15 a month with the purchase of a three-month plan, I called him on it. Turns out it really is easy to get wireless for $15 a month. The longest part of the process was the time I spent on hold waiting to break up with my old provider. I don't know, Noah. Will I still get the same speeds? And do I have to change my phone? Sure will, Marsh. And not at all, Eli. To get this new customer offer and your new three-month premium wireless plan for just $15 a month, go to mintmobile.com slash cam. That's mintmobile.com slash cam. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash cam. $45 upfront payment required, equivalent to $15 a month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Speed slower, above 40 gigabytes on unlimited plan and additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. All right, Noah. Thanks. Side note. Um. What's with the big red marks on your chest and stomach? Oh, yeah. On the first run, we tried fiery hoops. I see. Did not go well. Mm. But I believe you. Okay, what about ball man? Yeah, no, we can keep that. Keep it? Really? Hey, guys, what you doing? Oh, hey, Eli. Marsh is just helping me clean up my subscriptions. Being a sports fan can get awfully expensive. Yeah, there's apps for watching games, premium channels. It, it can all really add up. I bet. But guys, you don't have to do that stuff one by one. Why don't you just get Rocket Money? What's Rocket Money? Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills so you can grow your savings. With Rocket Money, I have full control over my subscriptions and a clear view of my expenses. I can see all of my subscriptions in one place, and if I see something I don't want, 
Rocket Money can help me cancel it with a few taps. I love how the dashboard shows me this month's spending compared to last month so I can clearly see my spending habits. Plus, they'll help me create a custom budget and keep my spending on track. Wow, Eli, that sounds great. It is, Marsh. Rocket Money will even try to negotiate lower bills for you by up to 20%. All you have to do is submit a picture of your bill and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. They'll deal with customer service for you. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has saved a total of $500 million in canceled subscriptions, saving members up to $740 a year when using all of the app's features. Amazing. Where do I sign up? Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash awful movies. That's rocketmoney.com slash awful movies. Rocketmoney.com slash awful movies. All right, Eli, thanks. Uh, so you subscribe to Ballman too, huh? Yeah, the soccer channel. No, mine. Yep. Yes. The soccer channel. Right. Mm hmm. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2024. All rights reserved.